He pulls out a gun and puts it to my face. And all I remember was saying, God, if you are real, you need to come save me right now. I see a flash before me. I thought I was dead. I thought he pulled the trigger. Hi, this is Sergio Sanchez, and I'm going to be sharing my testimony. So I'm fresh out of high school, starting this new job. I remember getting a position at my high school where I graduated from to be a volunteer security guard. I got that position for the wrong reasons. The reason why I got it was to let all my friends out. If they were ditching, I would give them a pass. So if they got caught, they had a pass to prove why they were out early. So I had that mindset that was already bad. I remember working this for about a few weeks. My last day, it was a Friday. I was walking home. I was actually waiting for my cousin to pick me up. I remember talking to him on the phone saying, hey, wait for me. I'm going to go pick you up. And so I'm waiting for him and five, ten minutes passed by. We didn't live too far from the school. I called him and I said, hey, where are you at? And he said, I'm on my way. I'm walking there. Meet me halfway. And I remember getting mad and saying, dude, why would you tell me that you're walking here? I would have been home a long time ago. And he said, just meet me halfway. So I said, all right. I'm already a little upset. I start walking. And I remember it was a really nice day outside. I remember just walking. And I remember seeing this police officer. He was he was a motorcycle cop. And he was actually, he had his radar gun out. And he was checking how fast people were driving. You know, the speed limit. He was trying to see if they were driving their speed limit. Uh, or also giving them a ticket. And for some odd reason, in my mind, I said, if anything was to happen to me, this cop right here will protect me. I don't know why I said that, but I remember thinking that. So I'm walking, and as I approach the officer, I said, hey, how's it going? He tells me what's up. I pass by, and I remember from the side of my, I just seen on the side of my, a fast car pulling up and pulling over. I remember this guy, he comes out of the car, a gangster guy, shaved head, long white t-shirt, long socks. And I remember he runs up to me and he said these exact words. He said, hey, homie, let me talk to you. And I remember just standing there, and I wasn't changed yet. I wasn't saved yet. Still living the roly life, party life, crazy life. And so this guy, he runs up to me, and he said, Hey, homie, let me talk to you. And I said, What's up? Yeah, what's going on? And so this guy's riled up. He's mad. And he's looking at me, and he said, Yeah, you look like this guy that was messing with my girlfriend. And I asked him who she was. I don't even remember who she was. But he insisted that I was that guy. There used to be a certain name that I used to go by back in the day. And so I remember him calling me by that name. And when he said that, I literally felt my heart beating so fast that I felt it in my throat. And he said, yeah, you're this guy. You're this person. I'm looking for this guy. And I remember saying, no, you got the wrong guy. You got the wrong guy. I, re I remember denying myself. Oh, you got the wrong guy. That's not me. This guy is like, yeah, I know. You're, you're, you're this guy. He pulls out a gun and puts it to my face. And all I remember was saying, God, if you are real, you need to come save me right now. I see a flash before me. I thought I was dead. I thought he pulled the trigger. When I seen this flash, I started seeing a flashback from when I was a child, growing up to a teenager, to that present moment. After I seen all these, these images and videos of my past, I literally saw as if this whiteness just began to clear up. And all I remember was seeing a gun in my face. And all I remember was saying, how do I call my parents at 17 years old and tell them I'm about to die? My parents, they were split up. My mom, she had a boyfriend, uh, which helped raise me as well. Stepdad, awesome man. He's saved today. Awesome man of God. And so he helped raise me. So I said, how do I call my parents at 17 and a half years old and tell them, Hey, you know what? I'm about to die. I'm about to get shot right now. This guy has a gun in front of me. I remember just pondering and just saying, you know, that's not me. That's not me. You got the wrong guy. From the side of my eye, I see another guy run out of the same car as this guy that's before me. And he's yelling. I can't even identify what he's saying. I don't even know who this is. I just see a guy on the side of my eye running really fast. And goes up to this guy. Eventually, he pushes his friend. And he said, don't shoot. That's my homie's cousin. So my cousin that was coming to pick me up, he actually knew my cousin. So the friend that pushed the guy that had the gun knew my cousin. He said, don't shoot. I know his cousin. So this guy, he gets up from the floor. And he goes, man, you're lucky. And my friend 
that was there that knew my cousin was like, he said exactly these words. He said, dog, you're lucky. This guy was about to kill you. He said, you're lucky, you're lucky. He kept telling me that. At that moment, this guy gets up and he says, hey, homie, you're lucky. He said, but guess what? You got green light. It means you got a hit on your life. Meaning, doesn't matter where you're at. Whichever neighborhood you're in, they're going to kill you. You're a dead man walking. So the guys, they leave, they drive off. And I'm, I start walking. I'm in my mind. I'm thinking the worst. I'm thinking, oh my goodness, these guys are probably going to do a U-turn and probably shoot me. I'm thinking all the worst. As I'm walking, guess who shows up? My cousin. He meets up with me halfway and I'm saying, dude, you just don't understand. Man, if you was just to pick me up in your car, this wouldn't have happened. And he's shocked. He's scratching his head. He's going, what's going on? I began to tell him, hey, you know, what? I almost got jumped right now. I almost got killed. This guy, so-and-so, pulled out a gun on me and I got green light. Dude, I'm, I'm a dead man walking. And so he said, let's go back. Let's go talk to him. I said, no, man, I'm done. And so he said that he was going to talk to them or something like that. And I said, no, they already left. This is done. I said, man, I can't believe this. I'm a dead man. And I'm just fearing for my life. I don't remember the, the rest of the walk or the, the conversation that we had after that. But all I remember was getting home. And I remember getting home and I was so afraid of my life. I remember saying, man, I'm not leaving this house. I'm done. I'm, I'm, I'm scared. I don't know what to do. I'm fearing for my life. So at that time, I just stood home. I remember what I did the rest of the day, but the next day I remember I had an uncle, he had knocked on my parents' window asking if he could stay the night because the place that he was at, I guess they were partying. He was a Christian. So the next morning, my uncle is talking to my parents and asking if he could move into the house because we had an extra room at the time. So they said, yeah. And so he starts moving in stuff. My mom is helping him put his clothes in the closet, hanging them up. And my mom saw this, this light in my uncle and saw how happy he was. And she began to tell him, how can he be so happy right now when you just left a place and you're moving into this, you know, our house? And so he said one word. He said, do you want to go to church? She said, church? She said, uh, yeah, I'll go, I'll go to church, but this one, meaning her boyfriend, which is now her husband, he had an alcoholic problem, just to throw that, just to throw that out. She said, this one's not going to want to go. My uncle said, don't worry about him. He'll come. Just worry about yourself. Just come with me. So my mom actually started going to church first. So she started going to church. I remember she went to church. She got radically changed, came home speaking in tongues. Came home doing deliverance, casting out demons. I thought she was weird. I thought she was crazy. I remember I was so afraid of my life because of what had happened. And I remember my uncle inviting me also to church. And I said, yeah, I'll go to church. I remember going with him. And I don't remember the service that took place. I don't remember the sermon that was preached. All I remember was being in a building. And I remember being in this small church. It was a small church that were, they were renting a size of, of, you know, a small house. I remember the service being over, and I remember just sitting the last row in the back of the church by myself. At this time, everybody was already in the fellowship hall, in the kitchen, drinking coffee, eating danishes. People are tearing down the speakers and putting stuff away because they're renting the place. So at this time, there was nobody inside the church building but me alone. Everybody else was in the kitchen or outside fellowshipping. And I remember just looking down at the Bible that I had in my hand. It was a red Bible. I remember just looking at the Bible. I remember just thinking about my life. Just thinking about, man, this guy's going to find me. This guy's going to kill me. I'm a dead man. I'm just in my thoughts. I'm in my mind thinking, my goodness, I'm, I'm going to die. I didn't know much about the Lord, but all I knew was a little bit about the Bible. All I knew about the Bible was... When it was in red letters, that's when Jesus spoke. So I did one of those, God, if you are real, the way people say you are, speak to me through this Bible. I did one of those. I said, whatever it lands on and I read it, I'll know that it's for me. I remember opening up the Bible to the book of Acts, chapter 18, verse 9. And I said, do not be afraid, for I am with you. No one is going to hurt or harm you, for I have many people in the city and I'll protect you. 
you know, this scripture is talking about Paul and Silas when they got arrested for preaching the gospel. But me being in my carnal mind, I was thinking, wow, he has people in the city to protect me. And I'm thinking of the, I'm thinking about what had just happened, how that guy ran out of the car, his friend's car, and pushed his friend, and he knew me. So I'm thinking, wait, this isn't a coincidence. Like, what, what's going on? He has people in the city, and he's going to protect me. And so I'm thinking, hey, that's just what happened to me a couple of days ago. This guy ran out of the car, and he, he protected me from getting killed. I said, no, this is weird. So I closed the Bible. And the only thing that I knew about the Bible was in red letters, that's when Jesus spoke. Now, in this portion of Scripture, everything was in black and white except for that small portion. It was in red letters. So I remember reading it, closing the Bible because it freaked me out. I said, no, this, this is weird. I remember something on the inside of me began to just, I don't know, I, I need to open it up again. So I remember opening up the Bible again. And it opened up to the same scripture. Acts chapter 18 verse 9. Word for word. Do not be afraid. For I am with you. No one is going to hurt or harm you. For I have many people in the city and I will protect you. I said now this is weird. I, I, I don't know. I don't know if this is real. I remember closing the Bible again. And just for a second just trying to grip my, my mind on everything. Like is this real? I remember just saying. Well, if I open it up a third time, and if it opens up to the same thing, I know it's real. If it doesn't open up to the same thing, then I know it's not It's not real. It's fake. I remember opening up the Bible, and it opened up to the book of Psalm. And I said, you see, I, I knew it. I, I knew it. And I remember just messing with the pages and turning them over. And as I turned them over, it opened up to Acts 18 verse 9. Still, I didn't believe it. So by this time... I closed the Bible. I'm freaking out. I said, no, this is not real. I don't believe this. This is real. This is fake. So I remember tossing the Bible two chairs down on the side of me. And I remember just saying, no, this is fake. I don't believe it. This is not real. And I remember just sitting there by myself. Again, there was nobody in the room. There was nobody in that place. Only people in the kitchen area, drinking coffee, eating danishes. And I'm in this building by myself. I remember there was no speakers that were up. There was no microphone around. All the speakers were tore down. It was a completely empty place after everything was teared out. So nobody was there. No speakers up. Nothing there. There was no AC on. No fan on. No big fan on to blow the pages. Nothing like that. And I remember simply saying, no, this is fake. I remember looking at the Bible and the Bible opened up by itself. And I remember it opening up to Acts chapter 18, verse 9. Again, everything was in black and white, except for that small portion was in red lettering. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. No one's going to hurt nor harm you. For I have many people in the city, and I'll protect you. You see, sometimes God will use certain scriptures to speak to you. Even though you're in your carnal mind, God knows how to get a hold of you and he knows how you're going to listen. So I remember seeing the Bible open up to the same scripture. Nobody turned it. No fan blew it open. It completely opened supernaturally. At that moment, I looked at the Bible and it said that scripture. I remember hearing the audible voice of God. Nobody around me as if those, it was coming out of a speaker. I remember hearing, my son, I love you. That was the first word I heard. I didn't really hear that growing up much as I wanted to. Because, you know, we all dealt with our fears, our anxiety, our depression, our own things that we dealt with. So the first thing that I heard was, son, I love you. I began to look around, who's talking to me? At that moment, I heard again, the audible voice of God. He said, if you serve me and give me your life, you won't have to deal with these people. You won't have to deal with this person ever again. I'll save you and I'll spare your life. At that moment, I opened up my mouth and I said, God, I need you. I, I don't want to die. I, I, I need you. I, I, I don't want to live my life like this. I'm done. And at that moment, I accepted Jesus. Nobody prayed for me. Nobody laid hands on me. I accepted Jesus in that seat. And I remember my life after that just began to transform. I remember getting off from that seat and I felt that the cares of the world just began to lift off of me. I felt so light as a feather, as if 
everything that I dealt with, everything that was bringing me down, every fear that I was feeling completely gone. I remember going home that night and I remember just getting rid of all kinds of things. I remember throwing away movies and CDs and deleting people off my friends list and contacts. I was completely done with that. It's been 13 years now that I've been serving the Lord and not one time have I ever bumped into that person or not alone uh, people that wanted to kill me. It was, I was a free man. God really spared my life. You know, it was amazing because I would bump into different people, old friends of mine. One time I, I bumped into a friend and this was when I, I used to do gospel rap. I used to rap for the Lord and do some Christian rap. Uh, I remember bumping into friends from high school, people that I used to hang around with when I was in gangs or when I was on drugs. And I remember just witnessing to them. They would get saved. They would tell people about Jesus. And it was like a domino effect. I remember one time I saw a friend from high school and he was still living that same life, the gang life. And uh, he knew about me and uh, who I was and how crazy I was from back in the day. And I remember just sharing with him the Lord and, and just telling him how I'm a changed man. He goes, lots changed for you, huh? And I'm like, uh, yeah, actually a lot has changed for me. Before I could even get into it, he goes, oh, you go to church now, right? And I'm, yeah, I, I go to church. And I was like, that's, you know, I, I love the Lord now. My life has changed. And he said, oh, you rap too, right? Like you rap for the Lord. And I'm like, yeah, I, I rap for the Lord. Like I do, I do gospel rap, Christian rap. And, and I said, how do you know these things? And he said, hey, the word's on the street. And I said, praise God. I said, I'd rather you hear that I'm in church and living for the Lord and doing things for God than you rather hearing that I'm on drugs and still doing things of the world. I said, let me tell you something. Jesus changed my life. I start preaching the gospel to him. He starts listening. You could tell he, he's wanting to cry, but he's trying to be tough at the same time. And I remember just sharing hope and sharing love and just sharing Jesus with him and what Jesus brought me out of. And I remember just him giving his life to the Lord. And I remember just seeing friends of mine getting saved and them being on fire for God, them sharing the gospel with other friends that we used to hang out with. And it was just amazing. God really spared my life. Now I'm going on 13 years, never seen the guy that put the hit on my life or even wanted to kill me or even people that wanted to kill me or even hated me. I'm a living testimony of what God has done for me and God spared my life. He kept his word. I'm here to tell you that I'm a living testimony that if God can save me and change me, God could do the same for you. You know, I'm a minister of the gospel now. God has raised me up. God has changed me cleaned me up and now God is using me for his glory to preach the gospel where you have a YouTube channel and which I'm uploading now and which you guys are watching from uh, you guys are watching my testimony what God has done I'm a minister of the gospel now I travel full-time I'm full-time ministry and I preach the gospel and we've been seeing souls being won to the kingdom I'm talking about drug addicts finally free I'm talking about people that that have sicknesses in their bodies being healed I'm talking about people People that are oppressed by demons, being set free by the power of God. If God can change me, God can use me after that. I was a wretched sinner. I was just so dirty in my sin. But if God looked down and said, I can use you for my glory. I know that he can save you and wash you and clean you and use you for his glory as well. I want to encourage you that one that is watching that nothing is impossible for God. Listen, if God can save me and change me and use me so he could get his glory, I believe that God could do the same for you. Whatever you're facing, whatever you're dealing with, God can save you. God can set you free. Nothing that you've done can stop God from cleaning you up and purifying you and making you whole again. Jesus loves you so much. And because he died on that cross, we are able to accept him in our hearts. And because we accept him in our hearts, Jesus paid that price for us on that cross. Therefore, we don't have to live in sin. We 
don't have to die and go to hell. There's a place that's prepared for us and it's called heaven. I want to encourage you right now. If you don't know the Lord, you're running from that calling. You're running from doing the will of God. I want to let you know that he has a plan and a purpose for you. Nothing that you've done. You can never run so far. You can never be so far enough from God where he said, hey, I'm going to stop calling after you. God has a plan and a purpose for your life and he wants to use you he wants to save you and set you free so that way you can experience his eternal life and his eternal love this is my testimony on how god saved me and changed me radically changed my life for his glory so i want to share this with you jesus could do the same for you let him in today stop running just accept him i promise it's going to be better. You will enjoy the life serving the Lord instead of just running from fear, and running from all these things that the devil is trying to place on you. Let him in today. Let me pray for you this day. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray for that one that is watching. God, that you would begin to soften their heart, Father, that you would begin to touch them, Father, wherever they are, wherever they're watching, God. I pray, God, that you would begin to do a miracle in their life, God. Lord, that you would heal them, you would set them free, Father, that even you would begin to break every addiction from the enemy. And Father, I pray, God, that you would begin to tax their life. Let them know how much you love them, God. Show them how much you love them. And Father, even as I pray, let them feel your Holy Spirit. Let them feel that love come over them like a blanket. And Father, I just pray that you will protect them. And Lord, I pray that your hand be upon them. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for watching. I'm Sergio, and thank you for hearing my story.